Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this is the Black Eyed Podcast and I am your host, Michelle. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm a little under the weather today, so I'm going to ask you in advance to forgive my voice if it sounds a little scratchy and I have to take a few pauses. <coughs> Excuse me again. Uh, today, I had to ask a question about incest. I remember thinking about a Bible verse, and I was thinking about this in the comments of another content creator, uh, that it's not good for men to be alone. And uh, I wondered then, after I posted this quote, that if being alone meant women. I remember watching this PBS special, it's just a segment, about eight minutes long, and I'm going to share that video with you today. Uh, how men did not have the social infrastructure to sustain their lives, and that maybe this epidemic of lonely men had absolutely nothing to do with women, but it had to do very much with men who were incapable of going out into the world and establishing and building and maintaining friendships. Well, that occurred to me in the chat, and I put something uh, regarding that. So I want to give a shout out to uh, Victoria's one who said, Michelle, maybe you should talk about this. You know, she didn't say I should talk about it. She called her by name, but she said maybe you should talk about this. So the last couple of days, I was a little ill. Like I said, I was under the weather, still a bit under the weather. I don't understand these summer colds. I really, really don't. But anyhow... I was in these YouTube streets and in these TikTok streets, and the subject, whenever it comes to men, seems to be that men are incapable of sustaining relationships. But it's not just the relationship between men and women. It's the relationship between themselves. And I thought, well, that's an interesting perspective, because if men can't build and sustain relationship, a basic relationship, which is a friendship, how then can they go forth in the world and build personal relationships or interpersonal relationships? How is that possible? And is this why they're struggling in the world? Is this why they're having difficulty navigating the world? Because they really don't know how to build and maintain a personal friendship? They have no interpersonal skills? Somebody a long time ago told me that most men were NPCs, non-playing characters. And it meant, really, that they had no inner dialogue. And, uh, again, the subject came up on the YouTube streets and on the TikTok streets that if Thomas Matthew Cooks had any kind of interpersonal relationship at all, perhaps he would not have taken the... Uh, route to destruction that he ended up taking now you don't know who matthew thomas matthew cooks is by now he is the suspect uh who has been uh he who has been stopped or <laughs> not even apprehended he has been stopped in his attempt to assassinate former president i was going to say ronald reagan but former president donald trump so you know, when all comes out about a young man, his friend, somebody argued that he should have had a woman I don't know if a woman would have necessarily, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe. But I'm saying that if he had someone to connect with and someone who understood him, someone he could vent to and just be himself to, perhaps he would not take these, uh, he would not have taken this role to destruction. But then also, I have to think about the incels, right? The incels are involuntarily celibate. Why? I never really quite understood the why of an incel. I mean, if you, you don't have to be involuntarily 
celibate, especially in the world of patriarchy, where most of the smex work is built around you, the man, not around women. So, I don't know. Is it then their inability to go out into the world and get what they want? Is it their inability to navigate or to start by just getting out of their own head and going forth and and just being a go-getter? And this is the problem I have with the Manosphere slash Red Pill. They had an ample opportunity to help men and young men and young boys to grow into uh, self-confidence, true self-confidence, not this false bravado slash masculinity in high quotations, but true confidence in uh, interpersonal skills, uh, getting together, being a group, um, establishing a community where men support men because really a woman can't be everything there is to a man. She simply can't. And as we see in this world today, the falling birth rates, women don't want to be. They no longer want to carry the burden of caring for the man, caring for the home, caring for the kids. Nobody wants to be responsible for the entire happiness and sustainability of another human being, unless it's a child, unless by choice. So I say all this because I really want to introduce that PBS video about men uh, not being able to establish relationships and how they are going about solving that problem. And I hope that this video is um, enlightening uh, or, you know, that it is uh, meaningful. And if you think so, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. These things help me uh, in the algorithm, and I do appreciate it. And also, I want to give a shout out to the people who come back every week and watch my videos. I do appreciate you and I want to give you a big hug and kiss and say thank you. I know in this vast, um, uh, <laughs> I just lost my words here, in this vast uh, entertainment sector, I just lost that word, um, you could go anywhere else and listen to any other people, but you choose to listen to me and I just want you to know I do not take that for granted. So thank you. So without further ado, let's just go into that video because I really wanted to share that video with uh, people out there because I think it's very important. I, I made a mistake because I thought it was that video aired last year, that segment from PBS, but it actually aired in January of this year. So I want to take time to put that out there for you and I, I don't know if it's copyrighted, so I'll probably stop and put my commentary in every now and again just to cover my bases. But uh, let's get on with this video. I think it says everything that needs to be said about the loneliness academic among men. Epidemic. Did I say academic? Now saying they don't have any close friends. And more than half of all men report feeling unsatisfied with the size of their friend groups. I recently traveled to Phoenix to take a closer look at the implications of male loneliness and how some men are confronting it. A great way to start off 2024 just another meetup. On a recent night in Phoenix, a group of men gathered on a rooftop bar to talk about their goals for the new year. I am training for a half marathon. My first one ever. Uh, spend more time with family. I have my grandparents, like my grandfather, and he'll be 91 this year. Wow. Make moments like this where I can sit and talk and, you know, look for mentorship and, and, and even offer it. This friends group was started by 38-year-old Quincy Winston. After leaving the military in 2015, Winston moved to Arizona with his wife Latoya and started working as an IT specialist. 
but for years he says he struggled to make friends here. Were you feeling lonely and disconnected? Definitely, um, especially when it came to having male friends. Um, I didn't have any, and that, that lack of connection put me in a place where I didn't know exactly what to do about it. So in March of 2022, Winston turned to the social media platform Meetup and decided to invite other men to a local restaurant. I think we went to a restaurant called Papa mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't know who would show up or if anybody would show up. Sounds nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was, it was awkward. But once the guys came in and hearing some of their explanations and what they were looking for, I found out we had a lot more in common than I thought. Seven men showed up for that first event. Are you guys warm? which Winston okay. says only happened because of his wife. You encouraged him to form this group. Yeah, I wanted him to have a social life, like outside of just us doing things together all the time, which was great, but I still felt like he needed now to have guys stop it here and because once again, this illustrates to me as a, a, she's his wife and she wanted him to get out into the world and have some friends. He needed to get out of the house. He needed to stop depending on her to be his everything. And as a smart, strong, <laughs> I know you men hate this, independent woman, because she has her, appears to have her own job or, or whatever in this segment, but she wanted him to go out and have some time where he can be himself amongst men. Because of course, Women don't know how to be men. We can't fulfill every need. Every need is not ours to fulfill. And she said, look, you need to go out the house. You need to disappear a little bit. You need to get away from here for a bit. Give me some space. Give you some space. And then we can come together. Because I think that having an outside uh, support group helps make your relationship stronger in the long run i really do believe that so you know it's when you say what do you bring to the table that's a stupid question when it comes to finances and all that stuff it's what you bring to the table when you have completed when you are a completed person and you have outside interest you can bring it makes you happier so you you bring happiness back into the relationship if that makes any sense. Guy friends. Yeah, she made it very evident that I need to go make some friends. <laughs> go disappear for go a little disappear. bit. Go <laughs> disappear. Now you have some friends. Yes, you know, come back, but you know, go. The chicken needs a little The week we'll for activities any, uh, like this backyard barbecue. You guys Winston's money. meetup group now had only 130 members. It speaks to the need for connection that your group is that big. I mean, is that, is that how you see it? Yeah, it does. And, you know, with all the technology we have that keep us more connected to where we can communicate instantly with anyone, anywhere. But if you notice, we don't talk as much. Mm -hmm. We text more. A lot gets lost in translation. First of all, I don't know what he's talking about because he just said he doesn't have any friends. So who are you talking and texting uh, with? Let me let me stop. I'm, I'm being nitpicky now. Because we just don't have that physical connection. I'm the newest member of the group, but I'm also one of the oldest members of the group. Connection is what 61 year old Robert Montgomery. Now, this is a demographic of men who end up dying alone in their studio apartments, in their tidy whities and nobody knows that they're missing. And I really wanted you to listen to his story because it's really kind of important. Murray was looking for. What motivated you to join this this group? My whole thing was I said I needed friends. I needed I didn't have any. I got tired of being you know basically isolated at home all the time and I spent my birthday at home by myself and I got and I didn't I didn't like that. I was like okay no I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Montgomery is certainly not alone. Only 21 percent of men in the U.S. say they get emotional support from friends every week. That's compared to 41 percent of women. Sometimes, as men, we struggle to say, I need you. Richard Reeves is the author of Of Boys and Men, Why the Modern Male is Struggling, Why it Matters, and What to Do About It. What is Now, the modern man, 
I thought about this a little bit, and uh, I want you to understand that I'm doing this because I'm not certain whether or not this particular content is copyrighted, and I don't want any trouble. But when I think about the modern man and their struggle, I keep going back to the Manosphere Red Pill. You know, there are billions of hours spent. You think about that. You know, uh, 2 million subscribers and how many millions of hours spent. Billions. I would say billions. I, I venture to say billions collectively amongst the uh, group of Manosphere. And instead of building a community of men who are sustainable in and of themselves, they chose to waste a lot of time reinforcing the patriarchy, the very patriarchy that sent men adrift. This has nothing to do with feminism. This has nothing to do with women's rights. This has everything to do with teaching men how to navigate through a world. And this has always been the case, even in Native American or, or Native cultures. Manhood, and this is what I talk about, there's a difference between masculinity, which is a show of manhood, and, and manhood in and of itself, which is who you are. And I feel that Manosphere Red Pill failed enormously in helping men to discover themselves instead of, excuse me, highlighting the inadequacies of men by blaming women, if that makes sense. I hope I'm making sense. But you know what I'm saying? Like, they spent all this time blaming women for their inadequacy when the truth really lay in themselves and why they're dying alone because they keep threatening women with that. Oh, you're going to die alone with cats. But women have friends. They have family. They nurture. They build. Women have built communities. That's what we do. But men did not do these things and how sorely they're lacking and how uh, Red Pill Manosphere have exploited this weakness to make money instead of actually really truly helping these men to become better people for themselves, not for women. Driving male loneliness. Why do men have such a hard time forming friendships and keeping them as they progress through life? You can't neglect a friendship and expect it to just grow. You have to work at it. You have to find the time. And my observation is that many women are just better at doing that and building it into their lives. So it's lack of purpose. So Reeves also says over the last four decades, there's been a steady deterioration of male friendships. For men under the age of 30, 15% say they don't have a close friend. And that's up from 3% in 1990. So we have a, a really difficult challenge now of helping men to find places, spaces and ways to be with other men and to sustain those male friendships. Last year, the U.S. Surgeon General issued an advisory outlining the devastating health effects of loneliness and isolation, including increased risks for heart disease, strokes and dementia. And while men make up slightly less than 50 percent of the U.S. population, they now account for nearly 80 percent of all suicides. That's terrible. That really is terrible. That is terrible. But again, I don't think women should be responsible for this. We're not. And we shouldn't take responsibility for this at all. I want to stop and say that a lot of these young men uh, have listened to Andrew Tate tell them that there is no such thing as depression and that you really don't have mental health problems and you can solve all your problems by simply going to the gym. Uh, Again, a humongous failure amongst the manosphere and the people that they do listen to because men need other men. They want women, but they need other men. And the men that they have looked up to, unfortunately, on social media are the ones who have failed them, period. And even before uh, social media, men have failed. They have abdicated their roles amongst themselves to be leaders. And I find it very interesting and hilarious that those very men want submission from women. I think these statistics on young male isolation and relatedly of suicide rates is part and parcel of this displacement that we see of time away from friendship. What should we be doing to reverse these trends? We do need to be intentional 
about male friendship. We need to be intentional about combating against male loneliness and that we have to create spaces that they're not going to create themselves. That's at the heart of Men's Shed, a nonprofit that began in Australia in the 1990s and now has 27 locations across the country. So then I have to drive through here then. Yeah. The goal here, to reach older men who now have the highest rate of suicides in the U.S. I had no idea other men like myself, when they retire from work, they lose their work friends, and then most men struggle to get a circle of new friends. 74-year-old Phil Johnson has helped start several men's sheds around Minneapolis. A couple of times a month, mostly retired men come together to both work on projects and to simply sit around and chat. Men feel more open about talking to guys like themselves about health concerns they may have. A couple years ago. A couple years ago, yeah. So the research shows over and over again that men do best when they're doing something and they can do it uh, together. <laughs> it's a chance for men to share a laugh but also seek advice. We tackle some tough problems uh, like uh, suicide, which is higher in, in retired men. We've had uh, three men that I know of uh, that have lost their spouses and there's always going to be somebody else in the group can say, hey, here's how I did it, here's some ideas, uh, here's something you should try to do. And no, you're not alone. Yeah. You have brothers, you have a pack, you have a tribe, you have a family away from home. Back in Arizona, I was invited on a morning hike with Quincy Winston's friend group, an outing organized by 29-year-old Nick Crump who says joining the group has exceeded his expectations. It's just grown so much and we've been able to meet so many quality people, so many people who actually want to be vulnerable, talk about the things that we like to talk about, uh, you know, talk about our life, uh, build that genuine connection with one another. That's exactly what Winston says he hoped for when he created the group. We need each other and we need to support, uplift, encourage and motivate other men to, you know, seek friendship. Quincy Winston now wants to expand his friend group beyond the Phoenix area, so meetups like this one can become more common for men across the country. Figure out what we can do to bring people together. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeff Bennett in Phoenix. Okay, so that was that uh, segment that I really wanted to share with you today. I want to know what you think about this uh, segment in the comments. Um, excuse me, my voice is starting to wane a little bit. So, uh, I'm going to call it a quits on this one. But as I said before, it is very, um, imperative that men learn to establish friendships and interpersonal relationships among themselves and learn to find fulfillment for themselves, by themselves, so that they can be better partners in relationships. I think that's very, very important. And you notice that this was not about blaming women. It's not about women. It's not about women's rights or feminism. That's not your problem. But anywho, tell me what you think about this in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time with some more content. Okay. Bye.